Hey kids, it's Papa. Are you ready to explore the Bible? All right, take your Bibles and turn with me to Judges chapter 6, and we're going to start with verse 25. Judges chapter 6, verse 25. Now, if you would pray for us, because uh, today, probably as you're doing this, we are flying home uh, from Albania, and so assuming we get this to you on the right day, uh, pray. I hope that you had a good vacation and are ready to dive back into schoolwork. But anyway, here you are. Okay, well, in that case, uh, Judges chapter 6, verse 25. Now, we've been talking about Gideon and how that uh, Gideon, you know, the angel of the Lord came and spoke to him, called him a mighty man of valor, and he said, who are you talking about? I'm not. And he says, yes, I am, because God sees what we will become and what he will make us. And, uh, and Gideon was still fearful and he needed the angel to prove to him that he was the angel of God. And so he made a, a sacrifice and the angel touched it with his staff and, boom, you know, he got consumed with fire. Well, now here in verse 25, we see that God comes to Gideon that night and he says, notice in verse 25, Gideon's, Gideon, Judges chapter 6, And it came to pass that same night that the Lord said unto him, Take now thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thine altar uh, that thy father hath, and cut down the grove that is by it. Now apparently uh, his father was not the godly individual he should have been because he was worshiping Baal. Uh, And this was an altar to Baal. This was a false god, a god of the land. And here it was on his property. And God was saying, you need to get rid of this before I can use you. And uh, his father had built it. So he took his father's second bullock. Apparently, there was an older one, a stronger one, but this was the second bullock. It was seven years old. It was still young. It was uh, very, uh, very strong. And uh, he says, take that young bullock, and I want you to throw down that altar, the altar of Baal that thy father hath, and cut down the grove that is by it. Now, I'm not going to get into this too much, but they would worship Baal there, and part of the worship with Baal was was immorality between the the men and the the women who were the priestesses of Baal, and it was a, a wicked, wicked place. And uh, and and so uh, he said, and build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock, uh, in uh, the ordered place, and take the second bullock and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove, which thou shalt cut down. Uh, And you think, whoa, he's going to take his father's second bullock, the young one, the strong one, and then he's going to do all this, and then he's going to sacrifice the bullock? Well, that's what God told him to do. Uh, And so Gideon took ten men of his servants and did as the Lord had said unto him. So it was that because he feared his father's household and the men of the city, that he could not do it by day, he did it by night. Okay, so he did it in the middle of the night. And the next day, the the men of the city came out to worship Baal. And instead of seeing the grove and the, the altar, they saw all of the trees had been cut down. And they saw that the... Uh, that the altar of Baal had been torn down and there was a smaller altar there and there were the burning remains of a sacrifice there. And uh, boy, they were upset. Um, And uh, they said, well, who hath done this thing? Notice verse 29, who hath done this thing? And when they inquired and asked, they said, Gideon, the son of Joash, hath done this thing. And the men of the city said unto Joash, bring out thy son that he may die, because he hath cast down the altar of Baal, because he hath cut down the grove that was by it. And Joash said unto all that stood by him, will ye plead for Baal? I mean, hey, why are you doing this for Baal? Uh, will ye save him, that he will, he will plead for him? Let him be put to death while it is yet morning, and if it, he be a god, let him plead for himself, because one hath cast down his altar. He said, and he said, wait a minute here, if Baal is a god, let Baal kill Gideon. Okay? And, <laughs> um, and uh, so, you know, I guess all of the men said, well, yeah, I guess we ought to let Baal do that. Uh, and they they left. And uh, then the Spirit of the Lord, notice in verse 34, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew a trumpet 
And uh, all of these men, when they would blow a trumpet, everyone would knew, know we're going to war. And so all of the men came from all of the villages and cities, and, uh, and uh, they all came to Gideon. And that's where we're going to pick it up on Wednesday. And uh, so, now what can we learn about this? Well, we, we need to learn that, you know, worshiping false gods is a terrible thing. And, and by the way, we do it nowadays too. Uh, you know what, when we, I mean, it's fine to cheer for a sports team, but if that sports team becomes more important to us than God, then it's an idol. Uh, you know, when we have uh, something that gets in the way of our going to church, when we have something that we hold up as so important that it is more important to us than God, it has become an idol. And sometimes it is what we think of ourselves. And sometimes it is, you know, uh, something. And sometimes it's an idea. And sometimes, you know, there's all kinds of things that can become idols to us. And we have to be careful that we don't allow them into our life. And there comes a time when we find that we have an idol in our life that we need to get violent to just tear that thing down and say, no, I'm putting it out of my life. And uh, so don't let idols into your life. And if you find that there's one there, tear it down. Okay? Hey, love you guys. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.